Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The International Consortium planning to build the Square Kilometre Array is still debating whether South Africa or rival bidder Australia should host the world's most powerful radio telescope. Keith Campbell is with me in studio to take a look at developments. Keith, welcome to Second Take. What is the latest in the site selection process? Well, the uh, reports on the merits of the two sites in South Africa and Australia are in. And it was hoped that an announcement would be made probably on the 4th of April. But it does look as if that's not going to happen. It does look as if the process is going to take longer. I don't think anyone really expected the 4th of April to be uh, the date on which it was announced. But it was hoped it would be around that time. It's likely to be a bit longer. There's likely to be a degree more of talking, a degree more of negotiation uh, among the participants in this project. Of course, the key part of the SKA is the people with the sites, Australia and South Africa, are not the people with the money, which is uh, the major European countries, China, Russia, and we hope in the long run the United States. So there is this uh, dichotomy between, if you want, the two sides involved. And we're likely to see a degree more consideration uh, being undertaken by the people with the money. Could Australia and South Africa potentially share the project? Well, there was unofficial co conversations uh, to that effect, perhaps between the Europeans and the Chinese and the other sponsors of the project. But in recent, uh, it's recently become clear that there has been, in fact, a rather unfortunate and depressing spat between South Africa and Australia. And both sides are indicating that they don't want w to work with the other. Now, this is very distressing because uh, radio astronomy has a very long uh, record of international cooperation. We've even had uh, international cooperation between the, the Soviet Union, as it was, and the Western uh, world at the height of the Cold War. Now, if they could get on with each other and work with each other uh, with thousands of nuclear missiles trained on each other, you know, one would hope that Australia and South Africa would be able to work together uh, on, on the SKA project. What is the significance of South Africa winning this bid? And do you think the country has a good chance? I think South Africa does have a good chance. Well, the truth of the matter is, from the very beginning, both South Africa and Australia had uh, good chances and have good chances. I do not take seriously the Australian press reports that uh, South Africa uh, had won the site selection bid. I don't think that was a reliable story. I don't think they had access to uh, the correct reports. But that doesn't alter the fact that South Africa has an excellent bid. But at the same time, the Australians mustn't be underestimated either. I still think it's an open question as to who is going to get it. South Africa has the enormous advantage that the core site is only two, three hours drive from Cape Town, whereas the core of the Australian site is more like two, three hours flying from anywhere. On the other hand, the Australians have the enormous advantage that they can put virtually the whole instrument in their own country, plus a couple of art stations in New Zealand. That makes things a lot simpler and easier than South Africa's program, which involves a number of other countries. Uh, in the African continent. It's still, I think, I think it's still pretty much open. Uh, the significance for South Africa, it would be a great thing to have. Uh, it would increase the country's prestige in the science community, although South Africa already has significant prestige in the science community, being a long established and major center of optical astronomy. The other question is, of course, is the technology. Uh, theoretically, the uh, International SKA organization could decide to adopt South Africa as the 
cite the SKA but adopt the Australian technology as the option for the SKA. So that would be less beneficial for South Africa. Conversely, by the way, they could adopt Australia as the site and South African technology as the choice for the instrument, which would probably be better for South Africa than getting the site but losing the technology. So the really big gain would be if South Africa gets the site and the South African technology is chosen to be part of the SKA. That would be a significant win uh, scientifically and technologically for the country. Okay, thank you very much. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.